What's up guys, Asan Malik back here, and today I have some really awesome LEGO Star Wars news for you guys. A couple days ago we got some really good information about the upcoming sets that we'll be getting in the summer wave of 2018. So with this whole release of information, we got the prices of each set, the minifigures we'll be getting in each set, and descriptions of what the sets will look like. Now I don't have actual images because images weren't allowed to be taken at Nuremberg Toy Fair, but we do have detailed descriptions of what we will be getting in each set. So that's what we're going to be taking a look at here in this video. So it looks like we're going to be getting seven different sets this summer. I'm going to be starting from the smallest and moving my way up to the largest. So without further ado, let's get right into it with our first set here, which is going to be the Jedi and Clone Troopers Battle Pack. As with most waves, we're going to be getting a Battle Pack this wave, except this one was a little bit on the strange side, as it won't just have default characters that you can buy multiples of. This battle pack includes Kiadi Mundi, Barris Afi, and then two clone troopers. So that does mean if you want to collect a bunch of these clone troopers, you're going to have a bunch of excess Kiadi Mundis and Barris Afi figures, which I guess can be a bad thing, but it's also nice that we're getting them in such a small set, which I think is pretty cool as well. This set is going to retail for $14.99 US, which is a fair price, like most battle packs are. And the description here states this battle pack includes two Jedi, two Phase 1 clone troopers, and a small dropship like vehicle. It also states here that Barris Afi features a new skirt element which is nice to see as well so since we are getting phase one clone troopers in this set i'm guessing this set will be based in attack of the clones and probably take place in the final act of the movie when the jedis and clone troopers are all fighting against the separatist forces and that's why you get that small build of a dropship as well but yeah overall this set sounds great it's really nice they tried to give barris offy a new skirt piece here as well try and make the figure a little bit more detailed and it's really great to get two named characters in such a cheap set as well but yeah it's pretty much gonna do for this set now let's move on to our next set here this is yoda's hut and it is gonna retail for 30 dollars US, and it includes three minifigures, Luke Skywalker, Yoda, and R2-D2. So this set is based on Episode 5, Empire Strikes Back, when Luke meets Yoda on Dagobah, and I think it's really great that they're giving us this set. It's very reminiscent to the Octo set, as the description states, which I think is really cool as well, it's also the same price point. And the description also states that the Yoda's hut is very similar to the same build in the Octo set as well, so it'll include a kitchen area and a bed, which is nice to see. The description also states that Luke includes a bracket on his back, which allows Yoda to ride on his back, just like he does in the movie which I think is pretty cool. I'm guessing this is going to be a new piece, unless they try and recreate this with pieces they already have in their inventory, but I'm guessing we're just going to be getting a new mold. And yeah, great to finally get this set. The only other time we received this set was back many, many years ago in an X-Wing set, then just included Yoda's hut on the side as a build. But I think this is a really important set that does need to be made, as a lot of the key features in Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi take place here. So it's nice that LEGO is giving us this set, although I do think it might be a little bit overpriced and would prefer like a $25 price point. But yeah, that's pretty much going to do for Yoda Yoda's Hut onto our next set here, which is the Star Wars Advent Calendar, which we're going to be receiving at the end of this year. And this is going to retail for $30 US as well. And for the minifigures, it says we have General Antok Merrick, who is seen in Rogue One, Rose Tico from Episode 8, a Guavian security soldier, IG-88, and an unknown droid. I think for the minifigures here, they're all really great. General Merrick is a really awesome character in the film. Rose, although I'm not a big fan of, it is nice to see her in another set as well. And the Guavian security soldiers are just really nice and well done figures, and it's nice to get them in a cheaper set. IG-88 we've gotten before, but again, it's nice to get another named figure. And then I'm not really sure what the unknown droid is, and it's going to be really hard to speculate from here because they kind of just throw in random figures. But yeah, overall for the minifigures, we do get a great selection in this year's advent calendar, which is pretty nice. And the description here states the advent calendar mini models include an X-34 Landspeeder, an AT-ACT, Anakin's Delta 7B Light Interceptor, and a Rathtar. All these vehicles and builds sound pretty cool. The Landspeeder we've gotten before in previous Star Wars advent calendars. The AT-ACT is a nice addition. It's actually the version of the AT-AT that we see in Rogue One that has that orange center part. So I guess it's something different that we're going to be getting. It's nice to see that they're doing that. And then Anakin's Delta 7B Light Interceptor. This is not actually the interceptor that's used in Episode 3. This is the one that he uses during the Clone Wars. And I'm not sure if we've gotten that in a mini build form yet, but it's nice to get it here in this advent calendar. And then we also get a Rathtar, which is a nice addition and does make sense considering we get a Guavian security soldier as one of the minifigures as well. But yeah, not much else to say about the Star Wars advent calendar. Overall, the selection is pretty decent. And if you're really into the advent calendars, you're probably going to want to pick this one up as well. And then onto our next set here, which is Anakin Jedi Starfighter. This set also retails for $30 US and includes two minifigures, Anakin Skywalker and R2-D2. And as I mentioned before, this is the Delta 7B version of the Interceptor. So that means it's the one that he used in Clone Wars. It's that triangular shaped one that's yellow. And we've gotten this set before when the Clone Wars was out, but I guess they're going to be giving us a newer version of this, which hopefully does include an updated version of the Anakin Skywalker minifigure from Clone Wars, except not with the crazy cartoon eyes and just the default LEGO ones, which I think LEGO really needs to update. And this set is a great opportunity to do that. But overall, the description is 
doesn't say much about the build or anything else in the set. That's probably because there's not too much going on in the set in the first place, but I guess it's good to get this figure and this build back almost 10 years after the first one was released. So that's pretty much going to do for Anakin's Jedi Starfighter. Onto our next set here, and this is probably the most anticipated set of this wave and the one that everybody has been waiting for. This is Snoke's throne room, and this is going to retail for $70 us for the minifigures here we're gonna get supreme leader snoke ray kylo ren and two elite praetorian guards this minifigure selection is absolutely awesome and will drive a lot of people such as myself to buy this set for everyone that's seen star wars the last jedi i think most people would say that this is their favorite scene in the entire movie and it's one of the greatest action scenes in star wars history in my opinion it was just really well choreographed really intense and it was just such a great fight scene and it's really awesome that lego is giving it to us here in lego form which is awesome i'm guessing supreme leader snoke ray and kylo ren are going to be the exact same variants that we got in previous sets because their outfits don't really change much at all and realistically they are using the same suits but the main reason everyone will be wanting to buy this set is for the elite praetorian guards which we only get two of in the set which i find a little bit disappointing i mean there are eight praetorian guards in total four different variants and there's two of each variant so i think lego at the least could have included four different praetorian guards one of each variant and then for those that wanted to complete the entire ensemble could buy another version of this set so that way they'd have all eight praetorian guards but now for those people that want to recreate these scenes they'd have to go out and buy this set four times or have to go purchase these minifigures on Bricklink or other sites which are going to cost a lot of money considering the price of this set which I think is a little bit sad but who knows maybe we'll be seeing them in a battle pack in the future which I think LEGO really needs to do. But yeah, now let's go take a look at the description here. The description states that this set is very reminiscent of the Death Star Final Duel and features a rotating lift and has a play feature that allows you to drag Rey across the floor using the Force. Now, I'm not sure if they're going to be including a feature to cut Snoke in half the same way it happens in the movie because I think that would be a little bit graphic and LEGO tends to stay away from those graphic moments in Star Wars. But I'm sure if you want to, you can definitely mod the set with your own pieces and build some kind of way to do that yourself. Overall, this set, I'm just kind of happy they didn't jack up the price too much. I was kind of expecting this set to be around $100, but I'm glad they kept it slightly less and it's at $70, which honestly I think is a little bit overpriced because you're kind of just buying this for the minifigures. But again, this is Lego. So when they do have these really exclusive minifigures that everybody wants, they do put them in the more expensive sets so that they can make more money off of it. Because again, Lego is a business and they do need to make money, which is perfectly okay. But yeah, honestly, I think this set could have been a lot worse. I still have a few gripes with it considering we don't get as many elite praetorian guards as i would have liked but overall from what it sounds like in this description this set looks like it's gonna be really awesome and i can't wait to see official images and get my hands on it in person but that's gonna do it for snoke's throne room onto our next set here which is the x-wing starfighter and this retails for a hundred dollars us it includes four minifigures luke skywalker r2d2 an unknown rebel pilot and an unknown astromech droid now i don't know what the astromech droid is gonna be but i'm guessing the pilot may be biggs or another one of the pilots that we see in episode four and as the description does mention this x-wing is part of the red squadron from star wars episode 4 a new hope and the description goes on to say that this is just going to be a redesign of the x-wing probably going to be more in tune with the newer x-wings that we've gotten for episode 7 and include new pieces that they included such as the new cockpit mold that was introduced for poe dameron's x-wing back in 2015 so they're going to be reusing that piece for this set as well which i think is appropriate and the description also states that the set is going to include a lot of stickers which really sucks but hopefully a lot of these stickers aren't too necessary and you can leave some of them off now overall i think this set is a little bit unnecessary but hey it's nice to get another x-wing in an update variant the one main problem i have with this set though is the price i think a hundred dollars is way too much for an x-wing nowadays i mean it just looks like lego has been stepping up the prices for these vehicles up and up and up each year i mean we don't have a piece count on this set or anything and i'm guessing the piece count is going to be quite high and probably does justify having a hundred dollar price point but honestly the builds for poe dameron's x-wing and the resistance x-wing that we got in 2016 as well were really nice and were completely done without requiring a hundred dollar price points and i think this one could have been done like that as well who knows maybe they did actually need all those pieces and made a super detailed and perfect x-wing from episode 4 but i just think a hundred dollars is way too much for an x-wing starfighter but i think lego needs to bring down their prices a little bit and bring them back to realistic expectations because the prices were already very high and i think this is just pushing it a little bit too far as a hundred dollars for an x-wing just sounds crazy at this point but yeah who knows maybe when we get official images for the set my opinion might change but for the meantime that's what i got to say about this set and from what i can tell by the minifigures and description of this set i'd recommend skipping out on this one and probably using your money elsewhere for different sets but yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for the X-Wing Starfighter. Now onto our final set here, which is the Sandcrawler. And it retails for $130 US. It includes six minifigures, Luke Skywalker, two Jawas, and then three unknown droids. These droids are probably all going to be droids that we saw in Episode 4. I don't really know the names of them, but if you guys do know, let me know down in the comments below. Now the description states that this Sandcrawler is nothing like the one they released back in 2014. That one was an Ultimate Collector Series set and included over 3,000 pieces. And because of that, the price was super high. This one is $130. So we're probably going to be 
expecting around 1,300 pieces. And the description does go on to state that this one is more comparable with the sand crawler that we got in 2005, which I think is perfectly okay. It might not be completely to scale or anything, or include as many features, or have that big size that the 2014 one did. But for the price, hopefully we get a really detailed and accurate sand crawler that includes some great figures as well. The description also states that it has a very detailed interior and includes many different play features, which is nice to see as well. And yeah, overall, judging by the description of this set, I really like that LEGO is trying to give us another version of this vehicle, but at a cheaper price point. And who knows, maybe after seeing official images, I'd be able to make an actual recommendation on whether you should pick up this set or not. But from what I can tell so far, I'd wait to see actual images, and I don't think it's anything to get too excited for. But yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for our final set, the Sandcrawler. That's going to wrap it up for every single set that we'll be receiving this summer of 2018. Overall, I think this wave is really great, with a few minor quirks here and there. My favorite set in this wave is kind of obvious, and I think you guys can already all guess it, is Snoke's Throne Room. Right after I saw Star Wars The Last Jedi, I just knew that LEGO was going to be making a set on this, and I had all these ideas in my head of what it's going to look like. And it's really great that we're going to be getting it this summer, and hopefully those official images do come out soon, and we'll get a real good look at what the set looks like. But yeah, guys, there's a quick look at what to expect this summer from LEGO Star Wars. Now, before you guys head out, make sure to go down in the comments below and let me know which sets you are most excited to get from this wave. And if you guys enjoyed watching this video or did find it helpful, make sure to hit that like button as well, as it does help me out a lot. And if you guys want to stay up to date with all the latest LEGO Star Wars sets, make sure to subscribe to my channel as well. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much going to do it for me, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.